um, in which characters speak in Spanish. I shouldn't say characters, but there's those who speak in Spanish. To, to what extent does the, not just, say, the culture in which you might find yourself, but even just the, the land, um, you know, the trees that happen to grow there, your proximity to the ocean, what the sky looks like, to what extent do you think that might inform your writing? Because I think there's some of it, I think, that I'm saying tentatively seems to be present in the poetry. That's a good question. I don't know if this is something, I mean, as far as I've thought about place, it has more to do with, like, those those poems that I wrote about California, um, which a lot of them in this, in this book have to do with, I actually wrote when I left California, and so there's, there's something about getting a kind of distance from a place and being able to write. Um, and I think that that's sort of tied up in memory. This book is sort of negotiating memory and, and then possibility and, and sort of um, there's a lot of kind of narrative grading happening between memory and the present and the past. And, um, and so it, I think I think that might just be the kind of coincidence that I wasn't living in California and that I could use that material in that in that way. As as far as using you know things like you know tree imagery or like ocean imagery and all of this. Um, I guess that just that material of, of like experience of the, the actual world. I mean, that's part of it. And then I, I, I think that there's something that those those things, those exterior things, become I don't want to say symbolic, but they, they definitely kind of lend themselves to these things that that can't be articulated. So they can become kind of metaphorized. You know? um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I I haven't thought that much about. What's it like? I mean, you said things that are hard to articulate, so I'm going to ask you to articulate something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like living in North Carolina compared to, because it seems to me, I was surprised when I lived in the Midwest how unhappy I was, but if I'm living somewhere that where the land in the state touches the ocean, it seems okay. I've lived in California, I've lived on the East Coast. Is your experience, you made a joke about saying y'all, yeah, you know, even the language experience in North Carolina, how would you inarticulately articulate I've only been here for two months, but it's funny, or there for two months, but it's funny that you said that you were for the Google, did you say in the Midwest, because yeah, I started writing this book in my master's program, and I was living in Indiana, and I was very unhappy, and that might also be another reason that I started writing poems about California, because it's something I'm going to in the mess, so right? I'm <laughs> back, yeah, so. Um, but, being Midwestern. Yeah, but, but I mean, I, I sort of feel like to some degree that, you know, I mean, ideally, I guess, that for me, writing poems is that it's a way of like making myself pay attention to the world around me in a more intensified way. So, um, so, uh, so I, I would like to, I don't know if this actually happens, but I would like to think that that uh, is, a, is a way into writing that kind of attention that I'm doing present location. And in the case of Indiana, it was definitely my kind of avoiding the present location. Mm -hmm. um, you said that there was a lot to do with um, proximity and distance, and there's a sort of a long theme of mirror of reflection, and I, I was wondering if that was um, more about proximity and distance from yourself, or if it was literally, you know, sort of a, a mental reflection, a physical reflection, yeah. or if it was like more by the... I think, I, I think kind of both, you know, um, there's definitely this, I mean, I can't, it's really hard for me, I, I almost like have to like put a kind of rule on myself not to use any kind of reflective surfaces in poems because it's just such a useful way for me to talk about, um, you know, something that's going on inside, projecting that outward and, and then seeing what that looks like on the outside, um, and so I think I think that that, that that's definitely a, a, a part of you know, um, that sort of self-reflection, and and yeah, like getting and that place inside, especially in this book, of that desire to be seen by others for how one how I felt, you know, um, or how to speak with the poem and stuff, <laughs> um, um, is is definitely part of what's what's motivating that figuring out even like what that is. And again, if there's no, you know, if there's, if there's no clear reflection of what, you know, it looks like to be 
a transgender person. I mean, it's just, it gets, it just like complicates that whole process, you know. And, that, and this is the thing, I think that that happens for everybody, like regardless. I mean, we all like do that, self-reflecting, and trying to figure out who we are and, you know, um, who, who am I in relation to other people. I mean, that, that seems to be something that we all do. Um, and so, in a way, I feel, I feel kind of lucky that gender has become this sort of lens in, in order you know, to do that, to make that, to kind of draw attention to that in a specific way. So, yeah, it's, it's funny, um, uh, one of my, my teachers from my undergrad college actually said to me, I gave a, gave a talk there, and, um, and, and her students were watching a, a documentary about transgender kids, and she, she made this joke about, oh, uh, you know, kind of boring, there was a, this, like, scene where they had to show the, the guy, like, shaving in the, in the mirror, you know, and there's always the shaving in the mirror, and, and I, and I laughed because I, I didn't, I hadn't realized that that's such a, like, it's almost this, it's, like, almost, I don't want to say all, I don't want to make a huge generalization, but it's really common to have that scene in a movie about FTM trans people where there's this shaving, the moment of the shaving in the mirror, and, Lo and behold, I have a shave, <laughs> a shaving poem in the, in the mirror, in, in one of where I'm shaving with my with my father when I'm like I'm, like, I'm probably like three or four year, year old little girl and he's taking out the razor out from the you know and let me like you know and and I think this is something that happens to you know he didn't know that I was going to go on to be you know transgender or anything like that if he would have known he might not have let me do that but you know <laughs> but but there's something about that the way those certain, you know, I don't know, it's called tropes or like um, certain actions get sort of repeated in all of these different trans, you know, um, or, you know, even, I'm, I, I would like to assume that most people have seen the movie Boys Don't Cry, I mean, there's that scene where Brandon, um, Tina's, you know, the, his girlfriend's mom, um, Lana's mom, looking at his face and touching his face really up close and trying to, you know, and it almost seems like she's inspecting whether or not he has any facial hair. So it's just funny how these themes get you know, sort of circulated, you know, because because we have so little to use and so these other kind of visual things start to, to stand in for things that we can't see um, in, our, in our own words. That was probably a longer answer. Than that. Should we segue to the drawing and the fun? Sounds good. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you.